Hello, hello. Uh, we're continuing the series of interviews from the Vox France, and we would like to continue the discussion with uh, Julien Dubois. But now we have a slightly different pro, uh, topic. So we already discussed GitHub actions, dependency submission actions, and quite a lot of things. But today I suggest uh, to delve deeper and to discuss uh, uh, what are you doing with the Microsoft Developer Drive and resolve build caching from your side. As you know, in Gradle, uh, with the velocity in Maiden, we do quite a lot of caching. So it's nice to compare the nodes from different platforms. So could you please describe uh, the project? Uh, yeah. I think you say yes, that's a bit of the magic of DevOps because we realized we were working a bit together before yeah. uh, and uh, we're mm -hmm. working on something called Windows Dev Drive with Gradle. Yeah. Uh, and so I work for Microsoft, so of course we do Windows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's a little bit, I don't know, a bit of luck to, to meet and discuss uh, about Windows Dev Drive. So I was meeting with some people while well, doing Windows Dev Drive at Microsoft because that's my day job. And they told me like, so that's improving the performance of build a lot for .NET project because they are doing Windows. I was like, yeah, but um, that should improve the build of, let's say, all projects. Like basically we all do the same thing. And uh, so Windows Dev Drive, it's a new option in Windows 11. You just basically click on a button and you have a specific drive, which is called a dev drive. So it's like a, like a CD drive, not a normal drive, but it's faster for building because it's got a specific file system. It doesn't have the antivirus work, working the same way. And basically, the IO is much better. It's meant for developers. So it works obviously very good for people not doing Java. And for Java, we expected it was going to do the same. That's why we, uh, we worked together. We had the look. Uh, the biggest configuration to do is very simple. It's basically, you need to have your repository. You know your cache. You need to have it on the dev drive, not mm -hmm. just your project. If you build your project on the dev drive, it's cool. But you know most of the dependencies are outside, so you need to configure them to be on the dev drive too. Mm -hmm. So there's like, I don't know, one environment variable to set. If you don't, it won't work very well. If you do, well, you benefit from the dev drive and the performance is mm -hmm. incredibly better. Uh, so the, we have a blog post. I, I'm guessing you will put it in the comments. Yes. Uh, where, so mm -hmm. the initial build is, of course, uh, well, a bit long because you don't know everything, but like the normal build, the thing you do day to day, uh, the first build we have is like two minutes with the, the dev drive, and with the dev drive, it's 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. So of course, your, dependent, your experience will vary depending on many things. But when you do buildings, when you use a cache, when you've got lots of I.O., you read the files, you write the files, you know, when you compile, lots of I.O., and the dev drive has got a much better I.O., so basically, you're going to win a lot. Uh, yeah, definitely. And I would say that it's complementary to other types of caching. So mm -hmm. I usually mentioned dependencies. It's a, it's a little bit tricky because you need to cache the right folders. Yeah. So it depends on your build tool, with Maven, with Gradle, with Golang. Uh, yeah. yeah, you have to configure differently. But actually, other types of cache, because of course, uh, mm. build drive. Uh, so, for example, in Gradle, we focus on uh, task caching, etc. So we basically track dependencies. If the files didn't change, etc., we skip rebuild. But we still get uh, to get, retrieve these files to check them. Uh, sometimes it's from a remote file system, sometimes it's from GitHub repository, and this is where uh, uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Dev Drive, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. by Windows Dev Drive, yeah. uh, Windows Dev Drive could be quite helpful. Yeah. Uh, so one uh, type of caching can actually uh, complement another well, and I'm really looking forward to trying to get together with Gradle, etc., to see what metrics we could get. Yeah. So of course it will vary mm -hmm. depending on so many use cases. It's hard to know, mm -hmm. but yeah, so I always much better. So well, if you're building, you're going to benefit from it. And again, it's just a small configuration, just one click and a few settings. It's mm -hmm. totally worth trying it. You're going to waste, I don't know, a few minutes to configure it, and then you might, mm -hmm. I mean, double the speed of your build. So it's mm -hmm. totally worth trying. Definitely. And actually, I have a communal to make. I love Windows. <laughs> I actually use Windows as my main machine. I use Windows in combination with VSL2. Uh, I benefit quite a lot from the ecosystem. Yes, I use MacBook and Linux from develop, for development, but for me, modern Windows is actually a combination, not of just Windows per se, but Windows, we sell two Docker engine that is yeah. connected to both, with cool virtualization, yeah. dev containers, etc. And the question is whether uh, Windows dev drive helps in this environment when you go beyond the uh, main operating system. Oh yeah, so no, it, uh, so it will really work when you're doing yes. full Windows stuff. If you use like WSL, you know, yes. I'm not really sure. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think it will work very well. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's maybe a good experiment. 
uh, because in my case, how I usually do Windows these days, I take Visual Studio Code, yeah. again, great project. I take Dev Containers, great project. Oh, yeah, yes. And yeah, if you look at my demos at DevOps, everything I do, I'm yeah. always with Dev Containers. Yes. Uh, well, maybe it depends on your job. Like, if you're somebody like us, like we do a lot of demos, we, we have new code all the time. Uh, we, we we want to have like clean machines and and to be to have mm -hmm. the good exact dependencies set up everywhere. Well, Dev Containers is perfect for that. You're sure to have the exact good environment set up for you, uh, and you're sure to have a perfectly working demo or project if you do a real project. Then I don't know if you're working every day for a few months on the same project. Maybe it's less interesting for you because you have the time to set up everything perfectly. But for a lot of people, uh, yeah, Dev Containers is a lifesaver. And also it runs, also what I love is I use it with uh, GitHub code spaces. Mm -hmm. So it runs on Linux. I know we started from Windows Dev Drive when you go to Linux, but I'm using it on Linux because uh, uh, I can have a very uh, powerful Linux machine on GitHub. And uh, also I want to create li uh, Docker images for Linux. And so for that, I need, I, I need a, Linux, uh, a Linux host when doing mm -hmm. well VM builds. Yeah, hopefully I won't uh, share any private information uh... But I can uh, just tell how I use it, uh, dev containers, etc. on Windows. Uh, my main use case is actually uh, multiple technology stacks, yeah. because as developer advocate, I'm happy if I just work uh, with less than five technology stacks during one day. <laughs> and it means that uh, sometimes I have Python, Golang, yeah. Ruby. So the technology stacks that are not exactly famous for easy dependency management. Yeah. And what I do on these technology stacks at the moment, I take dev containers. I make a dev container with custom images. I pre-install all the dependencies like for Python, etc. And my next step is actually expanding it because, for example, for me, common use case is documentation of websites. I really like MK Docs, I really like Antora. Again, different uh, technology stacks, but for all of them, I do not want uh, to have them locally. And instead of that, I build dev container that catches it, uh, have a local development environment. And then uh, basically, I have the same dev container image. Yeah. I put it into GitHub Actions because the same Docker image can be executed from uh, GitHub Actions. So basically, I have an image that has continuous delivery pipeline on GitHub Actions. And then I use it locally. I use it uh, on GitHub in pipeline. And I also use it uh, for building production site. So basically, I'm sure that uh, the same environment is used in three places. And uh, it's actually quite a good application uh, for that. I'm doing exactly like you, so I, basically I'm just to Alan <laughs> doing the exact same thing as you with uh, God Spaces. Uh, uh, with GitHub Actions, what I love to do also is I have a pipeline with three builds with GraalVM, four maybe. So, you know, I've got Linux, I've got Windows, uh, and Mac OS, you know, the classic one and the silicon one. Yeah. So uh, that's what I'm doing. There's a project called NewGen I work on, and we've got CLI, so it needs to work on all your machines. I need to check, but we've got at least three, but maybe four builds, you know, for, for all those types. I need to check where we are currently. But yeah. Yeah, but it's a really good combination of tech. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Very useful. Uh, for productivity, it's perfect. It, it saves a lot of time. Yeah. It saves a lot of time troubleshooting. And just like a sneak peek, I'm already working on dev container for Gradle that would be quite flexible. Uh, mm. There is a basic Java container that supports Maven and Gradle. Yeah. But it doesn't have many features included. For example, no build scan capability that would be click a button, uh, the environment. Yeah, is for not me, it's, it's just like a flag where you say, I want to have Gradle or not, something that simple. Yeah, yeah you can do more. Uh, yeah. It's not uh, that uh, simple because uh, you also have default configurations for memory, for Gradle. Yeah. And when you know the target size of the container, for example, for GitHub Actions for your environment, you can do some uh, handy configuration uh, that is not available by default. Oh. So I think that uh, there are some benefits in having such uh, out-of-the-box dev container samples so that people could adopt them. Okay, yeah. So it's one of my pet projects. Okay. Stay tuned, maybe. Uh, please do it. Uh, I want to use it. So please do it. <laughs> we'll do. It. Well, the first one is actually MK Docs, <laughs> but uh, yeah, then it will be uh, a Gradle one. And yeah, going back to uh, Microsoft uh, Developer Drive. So you mentioned .NET, you mentioned Java. Any other technology stacks you experiment with? Also, well, uh, well, in my, well, in the team I'm in, we have, yeah. we have in fact, th uh, four teams. Uh, there's one doing yeah. .NET, one doing Java, one doing JavaScript, uh, and one doing Python. Mm -hmm. So all the main languages. And of course, we have people doing, let's say, less popular languages like Go, Rust, and everything. But that's uh, yeah. that's uh, uh, that's all. I mean, so basically, the technology itself is uh, uh, well. 
Microsoft DevDrive is technology agnostic. So as yeah. long as your environment is configured properly, it should work. Oh, yeah, no. So everything we do, I mean, the goal at Microsoft is yeah. to help all developers. So DevDrive right. is here to help, uh, you know, for all technologies. But same mm -hmm. as like when we work on containers or on Kubernetes, the goal mm -hmm. is that, you know, you can package all those <laughs> all those tools in the container that will run perfectly well on Azure, typically. Yeah. Uh, and, and my goal, and this is the goal of the team I work with, is to help developers to be more productive and, and, and deploy faster. And then, of course, yeah. it's better if they run it on a Microsoft yeah. uh, product. <laughs> yeah. Do you have plans for enabling a Microsoft uh, build cache, Windows build cache, by default uh, on GitHub Actions or EG DevOps? Oh, no, because it's, uh, so it's only, oh, so, nothing I know about. No, 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 no. Nothing I know about. So, I mean, I'm like, yep. uh, uh, I don't have good information for you. But, uh, um, I mean, you can totally run GitHub Actions on Windows. It's one of the goals yes. I'm using. So, I, I have no idea why it wouldn't be possible, like, to have Dev Drive on the GitHub Actions. I, I don't know if they use it or if they plan to use it. But yeah, that's mm -hmm. probably something we need to, to to have a look at. Yeah. So. It's also something to explore because yeah, when you run on the local system, when you self-manage CI, it's quite easy to set up because basically it's just a virtual private system. Yeah. But I'm not sure whether you could even set it up on GitHub Action as a part oh, no, of no, 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 not that. Uh, yeah. As a developer, you can you cannot do it. Yeah. But I have no idea if they if they're doing it on the on the okay, server side. So we'll see, but I would be curious to know. Yeah. And uh, thanks a lot uh, for this uh, technology introduction. I hope soon we will publish some uh, statistics, etc. for Gradle builds. You can already uh, find a blog post from June last year that was initial experiments uh, for um, uh, Windows Dev Drive, the Sprint project, if I recall correctly. Yeah, also the goal was to, I mean, to test with the real life project and we took Spring because it's a big project. Yeah. Well, is it real life? I'm not sure a lot of people are having something that big as Spring. Yeah, so. I don't think it's real life. So mostly, yeah. yeah, Spring is quite special. Also, there were many changes since uh, Gradle build tool 8.2, which was yeah. tested. So, for example, the build caching is enabled by default. There are quite a lot of performance advantages there. Now we also introduce configuration cache which is, again, uh, should be quite helpful because now configuration cache loads a lot of stuff uh, at, it could be class loaded. Um, and for example, if uh, build cache actually increases the calculation of file checksums, yeah. it will be a big advantage for Gradle because one of our common use cases is uh, thousands and tens of thousands small files that we have to track, we have to calculate mm -hmm. checksums. Mm -hmm. And if uh, with uh, uh, basically Windows Dev Drive, we can do it automatically, fast, uh, fast thanks mm -hmm. to caching, etc. It will be also massive performance boost. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to seeing these numbers, and yeah, I would be happy to share them once we have well, it. Yeah, we need to test again, maybe yeah. with so newer versions yeah, and more realistic together. project. But yeah, yeah. Well, let's continue working together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot for this interview, Thank and thanks for everyone watching. If you're interested, we shared quite a lot of links, and uh, also reach out uh, to us on Slack. There is a special channel for Windows support, etc. There are quite a lot of Microsoft folks on Gradle community Slack, so we can uh, discuss all the things there. And uh, thanks a lot for your time, Julia. Thank uh, you. So looking forward to the next steps. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. See you.